Let's keep moving. This guy's won before. This guy's won twice in four years. Let's see if he can make it three and five. I mean, really, there's only one guy who should follow Vic, right? It's got to be Brad in Corona. Smack off 19 continues with Brad in Corona. Hey, Brad, how you doing? I'm doing great, Jim. How are you, bud? All good. All good. Hey, Victor, you shouldn't worry too much about leaving a legacy. You've left one. You just talked about more dudes, packages, and poop in that last phone call than anyone who's ever called the show. Ever. Stevie Carbone, way to tell Joe Fonin it's a sports show right after your riveting take about Jennifer Love Hewitt getting knocked up. Fail. Jason Stewart, could you have read that phone call in a voice that was more wooden than laconic? The answer is basically no, basically. I actually thought that your voice was still Mark in Hollywood's never-ending Siri bit, and he was just playing it at half speed. You're trying too hard, Stu. You're acting like scorebig.com is a dating website for lonely, single, fat people. It's not. You're a moron. You know who else is a moron, Jim? The guy on Facebook who brags when his team beats the Lakers, Dodgers, or Angels that his team won with 200 million less dollars in payroll than the Lakers, Dodgers, or Angels. Hey, Facebook sports moron. The reason your team has 200 million less payroll is because your team owners have 200 million less cash. Seriously, how much does it really cost to own a sports franchise outside of California, Jim? Help me out. Like, I'm pretty sure when I win this thing today, I'll be able to trade my $1,000 in tickets, the grill, and the kegerator for like a 35% share of the Pacers and possibly all of the Detroit Tigers. If you own a professional sports team outside of California and you moved out here and tried to make a name for yourself, you would end up owning a 1,500-square-foot condo in El Segundo and one Chick-fil-A. You'd be standing out on the corner in a cow suit trying to schlep chicken sandwiches. So shut your pie hole about payroll, you Facebook sports moron. And speaking of guys from out of state who are never going to make it out here, Chael Sonnen, why did you retire? You were so close to setting a record in the UFC that would never be touched again. As the guy who got the crap kicked out of him in every single weight class in the UFC. What a legacy, Chael! And by the way, memo to Chael Sonnen and every other potential retiree in the UFC, it's not cool to announce your retirement right after you get your face beat in, okay? In the real world, if you don't do your job, you get fired. For some reason in the UFC, you think failing miserably gives you the right to grab the microphone from Joe Rogan's bald hand and announce to your family that daddy and his beat up face and funny looking ears and ringworm are on their way home for good. No need to tell us, we knew. That's just as unnecessary as Mark in Hollywood announcing to his parents that he needs to borrow rent money. We get it, Mark. California's not treating you like you thought it would. The check's in the mail. Again. Now, why don't you go watch Swingers one last time and then call it a career and move back to wherever you came from? Thanks. Jim, I guess what I'm trying to say today is there's no more triangle of hate. There's just me and there's hate. There's no more Midwest or SoCal Mafia, Jim. There's just me and a bunch of stupid hacks. They've all become hacks to me now, Jim. There were days when Chill Sonnen was cool. Then he got his ass kicked by John Bones Jones and a bunch of other dudes in Speedos. There were nights when Vic wasn't a tool. Oh, come on now, let's be honest, Vic in NoCal has always been a big doucher. Mike and Indy started crying in the instant that I won. And he hasn't stopped his bitching even now. And when I win this thing, he's gonna cry and bitch some more. But when I smack him like this, and it takes it like that. Jim, you'll have to admit that this guy's just a hack to me when I clown him like this. 
and they take it like that. It's not hard to believe that they've all become hacks to me. They've all become hacks. They're all just hacks to me now. I want tickets and cash and trips to Vegas and flights. They all haven't won crap unless you count those steak knives. I'm gonna win that Kager Raider. It's worth more than Mike and I. You don't like that car. I don't like that car. Not a very good car. Brad, it was such a good call. It was such a good call, and I was already thinking, you know, where are you going to put that? Is it good enough to get it done? And then you started to sing. And then my thought process was, all right, this might be the thing that nails it for him. He's going to close the show. But then you kept singing and kept singing and kept singing. And then the song was longer than Lance and Louisville. You know, how can I run somebody in the hack off for singing too long and then let that go in the smack off? The standard's got to be higher here. It was just too long. It was just too long. It was a great phone call. It was a great phone call and the song had potential, but man, what, are you going to go, are you going to give me a five-minute phone call and then a five-minute song on the back end of a five-minute phone call? Just too long. Just too long. All right, so clones, do what you want with that. Agree or disagree. Was the song too long or not? And don't get me wrong. Our decision is final. Hate to see that. To me, that's a bad tactical move on a very good phone call. Now, if I'm Mark in Hollywood, or I'm Vic, or I'm Joe, or I'm Jason Forrest, and I'm going to be like, good. Got him. We don't have to worry about that guy now. All right, what is your reaction to it? I thought Brad, and Brad showed up in a different way. Brad was angry today. There was no triangle of hate, just him. I really liked the phone call until the song went too long. We will take a short time.